Um, let's read Haggai. And then I'm going to pray, and then we'll do the offering, and then we'll go into the message. And if you have any questions about any of this, you can talk to me or Brian or, or the council. Council is uh, Marilyn Lambeth, uh, Steve Kwan, uh, Scotty Chitwood, and Eddie Inabakari. So, in the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to Haggai, the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says this time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You've sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that it may t I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you bought, brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth beholds its fruit. Uh, for I called for a drought on the land, the mountains, on the grain, and new wine, and oil, and whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and all the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, and the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the presence of the Lord. And then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. And so the Lord stirred the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the remnant of the people. And they came and they worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. So then I begin, and then it's in the seventh month, on the first of the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came to Haggai, the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be strong, Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work. For I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you, do not fear. Which was the plan of having a, peep, a tabernacle so God could be in the midst of his people. And it never left. He never left. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. I, I'm reading that not to put any guilt on anybody, because that don't, don't do that. But to, the promise that came once people felt the stirring and, and acted, acted in their place was that I've always been with you, and I'm going to bring a greater glory at this season than the one you, you remember. So it's not a loss, it's a gain. And... I'm the one that says silver, gold, and it's inside of glory. So I pray, and I'd like to pray, and then we'll collect the offering. I'd like Diane to come up. <clears throat> if you've heard yet lately her song, Mansions, which is about, you see, I don't think that it's the temple they want to build on the mountain right now, because that one will be, seat, host, you know, will be the Antichrist throne for a little short, short moment. And I don't even think it's Ezekiel's temple that will be built during the millennial reign. I think it's us being the hosting presence of God, the living stones. 
And I think the collecting of the people, like in Nehemiah's day, when you began to re everybody got on their wall and began to build, was so that the reproach falls off because people are engaged. The hardest thing that happens to any believer is when you disengage. Whether it's disengaging your confidence in the Lord because it's, you went through a really tough time and you don't know how to believe so hard, or within the body, or family, it's the disengagement. But then when the Lord calls us to rally, and in Haggai season, they had been shut down because it was illegal to build the temple. And yet now the time had gone so far that that probably wasn't going to be an issue, but who it would, certainly was a good reason not to keep building. And now they're being challenged, and they would face the same opposition when they started building. And Zechariah would be the prophet to help them walk that one through grace. So it's a funny thing about God, the way he is um, he's using everything, everything for us to learn him. Nothing is not being used. So let's pray. Diana will sing. Thank you for listening. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that Jubilee is a beautiful experiment of freedom, of covenant, of liberty, of you. Lord, I thank you for the last five years, and transitions and change and what you're about and bringing forth in so many lives. Lord, we ask you now to look upon our giving and cause a supernatural release of funds, a rally like you did in Nehemiah's day. All of a sudden, you just say, there, that's release. Give us faith. Give us courage. And then cause a blessing to fall. And cause great grace to increase in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll go ahead and receive the offering. of beauty building me a place of safety building me a place of love where your glory dwells building me a place of beauty Building me a place of safety. Building me a place of love where your glory dwells. I am yours. You are mine. Will be together forever I am yours you are mine we'll be together forever I am yours you are mine we'll be together your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips.
Sometimes it keeps you on track when the challenge and the war comes against your commitment. That's why I think the paper was a uh, goal. But Jordan just leaned over and told me this, and I'd like him to share and testify. So about, so about um, probably two years ago, I remember I, I was seeking the Lord. I was seeking promotion. And um, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, this was back when I was just an assistant manager. I said, Lord, I, I want to, or no, I was a key holder, not even assistant. I asked the Lord, I was like, Lord, I, I, want, um, I want to be a store manager. So I was asking him for promotion. And um, he asked me, um, he said, well, are you willing to give 20%? And foolishly in my youth, I said, well, yes, I am. I'll, I'll do it. Well, two years went by and, you know, he promoted me to store manager. It wasn't at that store, but it was at a different store. And um, I was going through, I was going to be with the Lord. And I remember I wrote it right at the, right at the top of, um, I think, Second John. Um, what it was like, I wrote it, um, you know, are, are you willing to give 20% is what he said. And, you know, I repented before the Lord and, and I just offered up, you know, I said, Lord, I, I repent. Like, you know, like I, this is an oath that, you know, I took with you. And, um, and so I repented. And at first I meant, I, I was trying to like wiggle. I was like, all right, God, maybe I'll give like 15 one week and 25 the next or I was just trying to get out of it I was like Lord maybe it was just like for that season you know and and the Lord told me he said son he's like he said it's it's not it's never about the money the 20 percent I asked you to give 20 percent is to enlarge the capacity of your heart to receive because in your giving you you receive and you you know and I, I provide so it's it's uh I, I promoted you to open up your heart to, so you can receive more. And so your heart opens more and it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it becomes more soft and gentle. So I testify to the fact that I answered that call of faith about two weeks ago. And at my work now, everything is just the, the God's supernatural provision and just the, like he is just outpoured. Um, we're, yeah, we've just been doing really well at work and and God's just so like, you know, had his hand of prosperity over the store. So I just really encourage you wherever you're at um, to just hear the word of the Lord, because whenever God's asking, you know, your heart to give more, it's because he wants to give you more and to just open that door of discovery open. So, yeah. Why don't you help me? I want you to pray over the offering today. So, Father God, we just we answer the call, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that you are Jesus, high priest of our confession in the order of Melchizedek. And we just offer this to you, God. And we ask you that out of the storehouses of heaven, Father God, you will enlarge our tent, Father God, that the pegs will be moved further. Mm -hmm. Father God, you will command blessing, Father God, to fill our storehouses, Father God. You will open up our hearts to receive fresh revelation, Father God, and also you will open our hearts to receive more discovery of you, God, and you are opening up our hearts to receive more, God. So I bless every home, Father God, every business, mm -hmm. Father God, every yes. bank yes. account, Father God, every relationship, God, in Jesus' name, Father God, and I just declare, Father God, just a great outpouring of your provision. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Diana. Uh, turn to uh, Psalm 27.3. I want to talk about the one thing. In April, we've been doing mansions. I will hope to train a bunch of people how to be coaches or builders, help people learn to live in presence, promise, and power. But I realized that the first week that I wasn't, I had to first keep painting the bigger picture, what it is to live in a mansion or be a mansion for God to have a, to carry something because I'm not te teaching anything new it's just for so many it needs to be renewed too many of us now gain our identity from an external world we decide how well our day is by comparing our life to somebody on Facebook we try to find a place in life and we look around to see how we're doing compared to our neighbor we try to sort out what's going on and and even the church got into it because we moved in about the, um, we moved into group mass movement versus individual hearts responding. And so we said, in effect, let's all lean this way and get, make something happen. And many gave much to do the leaning. 
and then it didn't happen the way we anticipated and people were left. It's a common thing for missionaries who leave and sell their home and go and serve in a foreign country, give everything away. They come home and they have no money and they have no place to live and they have no reception at the other side. Then goes a, a real a process that you go, well, why did I do that? You know, where, where, where's the rest of the body? How come no one's responding? You go the blame game. You go, well, you know, people aren't, aren't, um, they're just not, they don't carry God like I do. They don't, they don't, they're not as serious as I am. They're all backslidden, whatever. Until finally, if you, all, if you stay long enough, this is, the, this is that part of getting known by God. If you, if, you, if you stay long enough, he finally comes to you. And all change happens with you, not with anyone else. That's one thing I've learned. It's so good to know. It's the only change that I have to submit to is the one about me. And if I can yield to the change he's bringing to me, then everything else around me has no consequence. The world may change outside or it may not, but I'm no longer bound by it. So that you end up going, well, why did I go? What was the purpose? Was it pure as I think it is? Maybe not. Why am I so bitter? And you just start processing stuff. And that's just, that's just somebody doing nations, missions, which is probably the highest sacrifice anybody will ever make, is to just leave all and go off and give away their life. And I know people that have done that, and I've watched people navigate that. Some navigate it quite well, some don't. But um, the, the being known... We did mansions. We started this, and about two weeks into it, Bobby from the UK was with us, and she uh, had come down to, to be from the Commonwealth Church, be with Diana for a week, been in our services. And she sat and listened to me share Hebrews 3 and 4, and the whole idea of encountering God in His Word, and how that looks, and how we might surrender. And she was leaving the next day, so she had wanted Cammie and I to pray for her. So. Um, Cammy was busy with somebody else, so I was sitting talking to her, and I said, you know, Bobby, you are made to do what I'm teaching. You're made, you, like you have the DNA for this, to carry a hosting presence of God, where, where you walk into the, into, the secret, into the Holy of Holies, where you enjoy him in all the fullness, where you encounter him, and she's going, yeah, I just, uh, how? And I said, well, just start right there in Hebrews, maybe, just start Hebrews three, one, and just start, you take the time, you process the scripture, you meditate it, you experience it, you walk through the door, you encounter the Lord, and um, before you know it, something of de a depth starts to translate, and so I didn't, that morning, uh, Diana told me later, the next morning, she got up and had a quiet time like she always does, she's a diligent seeker of God, but this time she sought him inside the word and had this explosive moment of experience, like it just like went off. And that's like two months or a month and a half ago and she was just a week or two ago in the UK doing a women's, uh, women's conference and she was going to teach on encountering, the, encountering God in his word. And the speaker right before her who was giving a quite a great session said as Bobby was about to come up, all that I'm telling you will mean nothing unless you learn to encounter God in the word. <laughs> So that was really cool. That was really, really cool. One thing, David said in Psalm 27, 4, one thing I have desired and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of, in his temple. I bet some of you when you were young made that declaration. I want to be, I want to seek you. I want to be in your house. I want to behold your beauty. I want to inquire. Uh, Luke 10 I'll tell you what verse is. There's three one things that, in the Bible, and I just want us to look at them. 1038. Martha and Mary invited Jesus into their house, and Martha got busy cooking, and Mary got distracted with Jesus. Now, it happened as they went. He entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed her in, him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you care that my sister's left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. So in David, we begin with the desire, the one thing I desire, 
Then we have to move and learn that it's an employment. That's what it means. Uh, one thing is needed. It's the word for employment. It's the one thing that we have to apply ourselves to, is to sit at his feet and hear his word, to be in his presence and hear promise, have an engaged in conversation. Then uh, go with me to Philippians 3, verse 13. Paul then states the third one thing, which is the, the big part, like the, the, the traveling through time with Jesus. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, the one desire, the one employment, the one thing you do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, as a believer, whether you're 50 years old in the Lord, five years old in the Lord, five months old in the Lord, these three one things are the real, is the center of everything. Everything else will change, but this is where eternity is being built from. David continued in the spirit to discover the temple, even though he could not build it himself. Um, Mar Mary continued to behold the Lord to the point where she ended up being the only one that could anoint Jesus for his burial. She's the only one that could see into the future. Everybody else was caught in the present. And then Paul said, you know, I lost everything in order to gain one thing, and that's Christ. And I haven't, I'm not even at the point where I've really apprehended the fullness of resurrection life. But one thing I, do knew, I now do is I forget everything behind so I can press forward to what's ahead. Because you have to keep letting go to go ahead. Does that make sense? Every one of us probably have, an, have a situation that we have to let go. I took some papers and thrown them through my sh shredder, and then it was too full. I had to take the, 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 the plastic thing out and go dump it in the trash can. And, uh, you know, all the, all the things you get in the mail that you don't want, you know, all your credit card offers and stuff. Anyway, I was walking in, and I felt like, you know what? That's what forgiveness is. Putting your debts through the shredder. Can't find them no matter what you want. Even if you wanted to piece it together, it would never work. And the thing that you have the opportunity, I'll take five minutes, I'll send you off. When I talked about, the, you know, letting, losing all, you lose a lot to serve the Lord. I look at Mac and Kathy who sold their house and went to live in Israel and set a foundation for what is now happening and, and to come back and start without a house. And I've watched you guys, you know, process that really well. You're one of the really well guys. You're, you're living. You're not, you're not cursing God and dying. <laughs> we never feel like we're doing that well. Because if you're honest, we have to go through a lot of stuff. But five years ago, almost six now, October 2011, I'm here in a conference. We're having a conference. It's a Saturday morning. The presence of the Lord goes still. 45 minutes of complete silence. I'm sitting there on the floor. And the Lord comes to me and he says, uh, you've done well to learn to abide, but you often leave your abiding to try to harvest. You need to make a choice. Now, I believe that everything you've heard in the Lord from the first day he spoke to you was the genesis of everything you'll ever do with him. You don't have to try to get a new word, just understand the word you heard. And whatever, everything that comes will get into a greater clarity of your calling but it will not be shifting the essence of who you were called to be. And I was one of those Davids. One thing I've desired, seek your face. You said, seek your face. I will seek your face. It was my dream. First message I remember hearing, first prayer I prayed after getting saved. I want your face, not your hand. So I knew the answer to the question. The answer was, yes, I've got to choose to abide. And so the abiding journey started. And that's where the supernatural five five months of being in the presence and laughing and living in the in a hilarious liberty of god and i've told that and that's in the book saved your seat then two months after five months the lord said you can t talk about what you're experiencing and so i began to teach and then after two months so this is now into may of 2012 the lord says go ahead and write it i want you to write this down something i'd never done in that capacity and i started to write 
the thing I discovered when I, when I released myself from living a, trying to get an outcome-based life into an in, indwelling life, was that it was not just presence that I enjoyed, it was promise. That there, the words of God spoken to each one of us are eternal. They'll never be taken away from you, no matter how bad you perform, no matter how well you do. They're not based on how well you do or how poor you do. They're based on God making a self-committal of himself. And it's literally the way he, exp he reveals himself. All revelation comes through promise. If you don't have a promise, it's hard to walk through a process to become transformed into that promise. Because the ultimate goal of all promise is to partake his nature. The seed of God gets in my spirit and begins to transform me inside out. So I understood as I was writing, we were writing about presence and promise, though I didn't use those terms. That's May 12, 2012. About July, I'm about a third into the book, and my, it's becoming very obvious that my daughter's marriage is, about, is not going to make it. It's, doing this, it's shipwrecking. It's going to disintegrate. And uh, by September, she'd move back home. My way of life, trying to live with integrity, I've always been the first one to disqualify myself because I would say, well, you know, it's not the time to do that. I'm too involved in this. Got to deal with. I need to respond. It's not who are you to now engage in a conversation about heaven when you're when the earth is turned into hell. So, I I was contemplating that, and the Lord said, no, you have to write this. You already got, and it was good enough to collect me in a com conversation with a few people that were now helping me that I had to finish the book. So something. And now all of a sudden I'm finding myself losing all of the freedoms that I was enjoying. Empty nest type thing. Daughter's home, baby, and soon she's almost reconciles. Doesn't, but they get a baby out of it. And then she's been on her way into, middle, into nursing school, which Heidi's going to finish. She's in her last semester because three years back. So I'm just kind of like going, okay, I don't have control. I've lost control. And I find myself pushing a stroller and finding incredible encounters with Jesus while I'm pushing a stroller. And I had to f reconcile a whole bunch of stuff, like, can you have an encounter with God pushing a stroller? When you should be, if you were a real priest, in a, in a, in a right place. Then I finally worked out, and I said, well, if Paul was a prisoner for Christ, I could certainly be a babysitter for Christ. Because it's all about who it's for, and and unto. And I'll be honest with you, you know, when Paul said he had high revelations and then he was sent a messenger and then he was buffeted in his flesh and he sought the Lord, this is 2 uh, Corinthians, Corinthians 13, I think, sought the Lord three times to be delivered and the Lord said, no, this is uh, for the benefit of the gospel, this will be grace will abound and you will, I will be strong and I will camp over here. I sought the Lord more than three times, trust me. But I'd get the same answer. He says, I want you to learn, I'm going to now, and what I walked through for the last five years, <laughs> I, I, I know how to be totally abased in the natural and abound in the spirit. I, I so, wrote two books, you know, Saved Your Seat, then Whatever I Win, walked through, to, you, you would just, we, we would sit there and thought to Heidi, you know, during all of this upheaval and for the last three years, that we should have just signed some reality TV show. We would be millionaires. This, would be, this is the stuff that everybody would watch because it's insanely crazy going through things and things. But meanwhile, God is having a communion and community with me and growing something. And so it was not till the Resurrection Life Conference that the Lord say, you can, build, you can begin to build now. You can build from this image that I've created in you. This is the pattern I want to fellowship with my people. This is the way I want to tabernacle with people. And so that was the permission in October, and we began to look into mansions. We started that conversation in March. Uh, come April, I'm going to train anyone who would like to be a coach or builder, helping others. See, what, see, if I sat with any one of you, I could bring you into such joyful celebration with heaven. Heaven is not moved by your life. It is applauding Jesus Christ. You are not an issue. You're not that important. But you are celebrated. To know the delight of Father 
and take off all the responsibilities of self to live in realms of presence that then open vistas of promise and walk in an experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why? I would... <laughs> it is so valuable. I found myself one day saying to the Lord, we're pushing up a stroller up a steep hill, engaged in presence. I'm going, God, I would push up a 50-pound rock up this hill to have this encounter. See, I, 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 the, the thing you're in is not your limiter. I, I could sit any one of you down, if you do what I said, and then practiced it yourself, you would soon have the same experience. It's happening all over. And it's time, it's, we are to carry this fruit. We're not to be distracted by the world. We're to be in, 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 vibrantly alive in Christ. Living in this joyful union. It, so that's what I want to do. In, a, in April, I'm going to do a 6 o'clock hour, pre-hour, six, you know, 50 minute training for leaders. We'll start a, a new membership class in April during the nation so we can teach who we are and reestablish our identity on the one thing. We get to be about one thing. To host, to, to, to carry, to enjoy, to delight in. And then we can have something to give hope to, to people when they ask, why are you believing? Why are you living in that kind of cap, capacity? So I, I, I want to say, I really think God is... Delighted in everybody who's willing to walk. You know, it's a funny thing how God will train a person or train a people to liberate them from the big, the bigger picture to bring them into the biggest picture. And I can look, and I, you know, it's not an easy thing. I've always said it's no easy thing to follow the Lord. He is quite demanding. In that he just wants you to believe and, and pursue. Thank you for doing that. Uh, there's fruit ahead if, you, if the Lord's stirring that. And I'm not, I'm not teaching anything you don't know. But maybe you didn't know you could enjoy it so much. You didn't know you could enjoy it so much. You didn't know you could enjoy it so much. And it could be also sufficient. God is so beautiful. He carries you into his arms. He embraces. He knows you. He has a conversation. It's all about a conversation. That's why I like that movie Shack, because that little emphasis, it's about a conversation we want to have. Too many of us are religious. We don't have conversations. We just have, like, I believe this. Instead of letting God engage you and call you into a truth and, and understanding, truth of yourself, truth of his word, truth of his love, feeling the power of his presence, being alive. Oh, it's good. So thank you. Thank you for just trucking. Five years when you let something go fallow is a, is amount of time to, for a lot of people to lose their, their value or get distracted. But, but to build before the, the approval of the Lord would be we'd rebuild the same thing we'd built before. We're going to celebrate Jesus in each and every person's life. We're not going to judge it by how the person's doing or how well they're going. We're just going to declare that Jesus knows what he's doing. We'll give room for anyone to discover God, but no one will have, be able to blame someone else that they didn't. See, the cool thing about what Jesus has done, he places 100% responsibility right back on you. It's all there if you want it. It's all there. Nobody can stop you. Your husband can't stop you. Your wife can't stop you. Your children can't stop you. Your money can't stop you. Only thing that can stop you is you. Because you don't think, or you don't understand, or you don't know how to process, or you're lazy. But if we will give yourself, there's, when I get up in the morning, the only thing that I got to do, that I want to do, that I can't, can't wait to do, and if I can't do it, it's the only thing that bugs me all day, is I got to go be in the glorious encounter with Jesus Christ. I got to go have experience and let that inside of eternity of his word and inside of the eternity of himself and his accomplishments and in the Holy Spirit, ah, it makes me sleep better, eat better, live better. It is more important than my exercise regime, more important than anything 
is my union and delightfulness. And it, and it, and it works when he went, once we step into that calibration. So I bless you for that to be yours in this new season. For you to, to renew and, and, it, and celebrate the, the, the Jesus who saved you. So Father, we have nations to pray for. We have a great group of people and a great day to live. It's like life is something that's used as a means to gain our attention to discover Jesus. And when we do, then what we discover is so much more valuable than what we lost and whatever we went through. Thank you that you are willing to engage in every conversation. Holy Spirit, you know your heart of what you're doing in the hearts of your people. You know where you're taking everyone. You know how to turn evil to good. You know how to bring about a fulfillment of completion. Thank you. Lord, I pray for grace to rest upon each of us as we go into our day. I pray for mercy to abound. I pray for encounters to abound. I pray for people, everyone, to step into this glorious place that Jesus said was ours, to abide in him and of his words abide in us. And I pray, Lord, that you look upon Jubilee and as you recalibrate us and you refocus us to the one thing, the one thing you've given us, authority, that it'll flood into all the ways we do everything and it'll affect us in every way. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bless you. Bless you. And um, nation's prayer in five minutes.